Hi, I'm Christine Sutherland, and this is my dog Bert. We're going to show you how to rub your pet the right way. Sophia and Asha have a special massage for their two guinea pigs, Bramble and Pig. Join us. Today we have Sophia and Asha. Asha. My guinea pig is maybe one and a half years old now, and her name's Pig. And my name is Asha, and my pig is um, their sisters, and I think she's about two and a half, and I've got her for, um, for about a month now, and she's but she scratches a lot and she's very sensitive to noise. And what's her name? Bumblebear. Bumblebear and Pig. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll first give them a back massage. Now if you notice, which way is their hair running? This, this way. way. Down this way from the nose to the and toes. And do it up. Right. Like, so like what we're going to do is we're going to do this kind of thing. So you can be really firm. One hand over the other. That's an overhanded reflex stroking. That's good. This will calm them down if you use slower movements and a little bit more pressure now. So it, they flatten a bit. So try this. I'll show you just do a little flatter. Guinea pigs are known for just going into about a pancake size. Okay, so try that. Let's go down the spine. You put your hands on mine and I'll show you some thumb kneading. That's good, very good. So we're going to go down. Put your thumbs right on my, there we go. And all the way down. I think you could be a little bit more circular. Okay. Like that. Yep. Okay, now we're going to do around the neck, right up here. So we're going to concentrate like, yep, very nice. Very uh, balanced with your movements here. Your thumb kneading. Yes. And then we go looking for the tail. There isn't any. There's no tail. Nope. So what we do is we work all around where the tail would be. So we take our little fingers like this and we go right here and we go around as though they have a tail and then around that direction. Wiggle the hips. Look at her hips going. A great hip action there, pig. Let's see if we can do their tummy. Okay, here we go. We're gonna do a tummy rub. So you keep your fingers flat and try it this way. So you, so you go round and round like this. That's good. And then you can take them like this. And you'll hold them all together so that the front and the back are in two different hands. And then we kind of go like this, like an accordion. And we stretch them out <laughs> and we squeeze them together. And then you can do this kind of thing, a scooping stroke to the tummy. Oh, like you're scooping ice cream. Yes, like you're scooping ice cream. <laughs> Very nice. Good make technique. Good, would make a good. And often with little animals like this, they often get snuffles, like rabbits get snuffles. You can help clear the sinuses, or if they have any problems with drainage around the eyes, and then work like you were going to do right up into the jaw area. Because remember, these folks really have great big teeth, and they do lots and lots of jaw work. So you get right here. So this is our finale. Work right in the jaw. That's very good. Here you go. Here, I'll change your places. Yay! Well, you folks are a good guinea pig massage therapist. Very nice. Very nice. That's good. Yep. And get a good grip on them, Alsha. You have to keep your fingers right on. Okay, right on like that. Okay, so we can let folks know we're finished. So that was the very fast guinea pig spa. See you next week. We're signing out from Asha, Sophia, Pig, and Bumble Bear. Bumble Bear. I from Toronto. Here comes the spa treatment. Oh yeah, is that pretty good for Buddy? Yeah. yeah. Oh, you are such a softie. Yes. So this is great. We are massaging him amongst his collection of toys. That's right. No, it's a collection of art. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. 
You didn't mind that. No, you didn't, did you? Yeah. Oh, you're telling me. So with Addison's disease, mm -hmm. how can you tell from the outside? Uh, severe thirst, lots of peeing, lethargy, anorexia. But he's um, not stiff in the joints or anything like that? Not so far, no. He's pretty good. And Addison's is what kind of condition? It's unfunctioning adrenal glands. Because it happens in people. Yeah, Jane Austen, mm -hmm. John F. Kennedy, mm -hmm. so he's in good company. Very nice. <laughs> yes, basically, he has prednisone every day, a small amount, uh -huh. which you know I know has its long-term implications, so it doesn't he's... thrill me, but he needs it. It's life-saving. Uh -huh. and, uh, and he's got good weight on him. Yeah. So he hasn't wasted? No. But no. is that how you knew his symptoms? Uh, I could tell a little bit from his head. He's lo if you feel his crest, it's yeah. very bony. Oh, yeah. Uh, and so he's lost some muscle mass around his head and jaw. Uh -huh. And one of the things I notice when, you know, he's under stress, it's uh -huh. adrenal stress connection, is um, he'll, his jaw will get so it doesn't want to open fully. He doesn't have, like, the strength to open his jaw fully. Oh. He can't get a tennis ball inside. Really? Yeah. He's... Is that pretty good? His tummy is uh, really. That's your tummy's thing. in good shape, there, buddy. Pies, is that nice? Yeah. Oh boy. He is a softie. He is. Too bad you couldn't spin his wool into a sweater. You know, I I've tried felting it, and I've mixed wool in with his fur, and it felts beautifully. It makes beautiful soft cloth. Mm -hmm. So and I haven't really tried spinning, so that would be something that to come. I have a bag full of fur from when he was a baby, so it's quite, quite black, unlike now, where it's, he's got some gray in there. Don't so with these paw own. things that are happening with him, is that just a normal everyday kind of complaint? Yeah, yeah. As he was running up the stairs, he's all excited to go and visit one of his friends, Patty the Sheltie, and just kind of... Kind of wrenched his paw on a little crack in the stair. So it didn't actually damage the nail or anything. Yeah, this is the one? one? Yeah, you can see where I took him to the vet and we shaved the fur down just to make sure. Uh -huh. So, no licks, no, no. That still hurts. It does a bit, yeah. But you know what they're like, as the vet said, all dogs are obsessive compulsives. So. Is that right? <laughs> That's a way to put it. Yeah. Well, that's very good. Well, yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, Augie, I'm taking one of your toys home. Join me for a rambunctious romp around the block with Red, the Rottweiler, as I attempt to rub him the right way. It's hard. This is Red. Red's one of my favorite dogs that I visit in Toronto. Red and Russell. So Red has a wonderful way of walking. He just, he wiggles a lot. He's very loose in the back end. He is somebody that you would want to work a lot in the hip area and be able to loosen up all the lower back and hips. Look at his walk. He's so um, wonky. He has a gait that's very back and forth. Like his back end looks like it's a bit lazy, especially this particular hip. Just got that kind of whipping And with Red, he's just got a wonderful coat. He's lovely to touch. Your chew. You're so good to touch. And we work right up and look for, yes, your favorite spots. So we work right up in his chest here. Such a great chest, Red. So I want to work around here. I usually have to lean into him. And the idea with legs is working the top, kind of like uncorking the bottle. So we open up the circulation to the extremity. Oh, you like that, don't you? All the way down, right to his feet. And with Red's breed and similar dogs to Red that are very, very strong, you really want to get hands-on with these guys. You really want to make sure that they're well handled, well rubbed and be thorough and really vigorous in your massage. You can really pull along and work their muscles. They're, they're like a wrestler. 
you know, and a lot of people will say to me, well, you're so small, like, how can you work on horses or big people, and how do you get through all that muscle? And if you see my stature, you know anybody can do it. It's how you do it. Use fingertip kneading a lot. With um, dogs that are big, and I wonder about them, you know, getting out of my reach, I tend to straddle them. I tend to use bilateral movements like this. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. And I always go for their favorite spots in between just to settle them down. Yeah, you like that. Okay, right in there. In any minute, you might sit down. So I'll do a, there we go. And then I got a better grip on them and I can kind of hold them between my legs. Very good. There we go. So I'll use my fingertip kneading with red and really work my fingertips in here so I can keep them all together or I can work them a bit like piano playing all into this chest. Oh, look at him. He's glazing over. You like your chest rub, don't you? And right up into the neck. These are the strongest muscles. These dogs are like bull moose. They're just huge. They have huge development of neck musculature here. So you really work all around here. Great big strokes. Yes, I'm back at it. There you go. Really working up and around the ears. So I'll do all this kind of thing where I work the top of his head with my thumbs. Yeah. And work right down. And Oh yeah, let me give your sinuses a rub there. There you go. I'm gonna go down his spine also and do these these pressure um, points here. And just, oh, doesn't that feel good? Oh, down we go. Okay, in a moving kind of landscape like red. We're going for the tummy stuff right away. Okay, let's do it. Okay, so I'll show you how to, <laughs> I love it because he, Look at his paws, they're so dangly. You're so dangly. You are the handsomest guy. Yes, you are. I get my hand like this, right? Like this. Mm -hmm. And I just rub inside here. And then with my fingertips. So you can use all this kind of edge of the ulnar border here, the little border, little finger border. Yes, that's a good one, isn't it? So you can work all around the abdomen. Get all into the inner aspect of the, the thigh. You're such a relaxed guy. Yeah. And another one. So this kind of thing is really, really good for being able to work up and down if they get any kind of thoracic or respiratory thing. And especially with animals with really big chests, you can work all the sides at the same time and then you can do this kind of thing. Very good. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So. Hi. There we go. And you get that nice hollow sound because you want to cup your hand so it isn't flat like this. It traps a lot of air. And then you can get all the way around. And especially with dogs that, oh yeah. And then for the big finale, there is the tail rotations, which Red and I have not done before. Let's see if his tail is at all doable. Russell is a dog lover that's really hands-on with Red here. And Red's used to kids and used to lots of people. Still not used to having his tail rotated. So let's see what we got here. See how he tucks it in? Not at all thinking that I'm going to be around there. So it's a four bone kind of thing. Let's see, Red. We can get that tail up and around. So this is a very big tail. And what you do when you're rotating it around is hold one hand close to the body of the animal. And the other hand is going to be rotating. There we go. So you do it about three times in one direction, 
and three times in the other direction. And we get them sitting down on it. That really helps reflexly into their lower digestive system. So if you have a dog that's constipated or... <laughs> oh boy, Red. You're easy to rub. Yes, you are. There you go. Very nice, yeah. So it's Christine and Red from the alleyway down in Richmond. Yes. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes. And now for the softest touch. Join me and Chris Smith and his apartment pet, a micro bunny called Scrambles. So I think he's actually a little bit of a big micro rabbit. He is. Yeah. Because the dwarfs are, that I met are this size, but not with his feet crest. It's funny because these are um, enormous I thought, feet. Do you think he's more than three pounds? Maybe we've fed him too much. <laughs> well, I think he is more than three pounds, uh -oh. and also his feet are growing. Oh my God! What kind of a creature we got? Maybe he's not. He's a giant rabbit. <laughs> the Canadian micro rabbit. Look at those big, these are snow feet. I think he's gonna have a great time to start snowing. So these are the parts that I always do all so you around, go around the job. Oh, okay. Yeah, just like you would on people, because mm -hmm. they're chewers. Yeah. They're really good at they, chewing. Yeah, he's always chewing. And so you work all around there. And then you also get right around <laughs> these ears. They look like little propellers, don't they? They go around. But it's just like any other animal. You work all around the ears. Can and these folks have really great ears. Some bunnies get what they call snuffles. So do you find, like, he's really hyper right now. Normally he just would chill out, but uh, mm -hmm. normally would it kind of be almost hypnotic for him? When yes. He this? Yeah. You tend to do the same kind of rhythmical strokes. Oh, that's neat. I've never done that before. And if you work all around here, let's see if he's going to take flight, doesn't it? <laughs> it's so cute. So cute. And then you work scrambled. like this for all the sinus stuff up in here. Yes, it's still me. How did you develop this? Was this something you just did trial and error? or is it? Uh... Well, people would have their animals and they'd ask me about problems mm -hmm. because they knew that I was massaging people. And it's also where I started. My start was barnyard beginnings because mm. I worked with um, goats and cows and in labor and delivery. So I'd be oh. out there when they would have things being stuck. <laughs> so one of the things that I always do is just everything for the spine. Mm -hmm. You know, so as long as you get the whole spine massage from their nose down to their toes and tail. Like a moderate kind of pressure? No, be really firm. Really, oh, really firm. Yeah, so try that, Chris. You just really make sure, like this kind of firmness, really push. They flatten out and they kind of zip right underneath you. <laughs> That's Here, sure. we'll put you right back there again. It's hard to control them in one place. Excellent. Good nice boy. hands. Good boy. That's great. Yeah, and just be more thorough at the end there. Very nice. And then what you do is this kind of thing where you work all around the hips, like this. Mm. So you do that kind of pressure on them. Excellent. Very nice. You've got, um, you're very ambidextrous. Well, I play a lot of beach volleyball. <laughs> I don't know if that's going to do that. <laughs> Probably your keyboard. A little bit of keyboard. Mm. Very nice, eh? So then, and then what you were doing earlier was... Uh, that alternate, oh yeah, here. So you're doing that one on top. Yeah, and you can do this with your thumbs. That's neat. Again, fairly firm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Don't be afraid to press with those thumbs right here. Yeah. And you can kind of get more of a grip on them. Oh yeah? You mean like yeah. in terms of the actual like thumb? Like this. You can hold like that with your hands here. Mm -hmm. And then oh, I see. your thumbs. Even though your hands are much bigger than mine. Yeah. So you can lift them up. So you got to hold on them. There we go. Very nice. Very nice. Those are huge thumbs. Yeah. Lovely. Uh -huh. And then getting around the ears is right back here. So try that. Mm hmm. You've got a good touch. He's so cute. You're so cute. <laughs> and then you can keep going right up his back. And you kind of get that grip on the sides of him so that you know when he's going to take, take flight. Yeah. Great. 
That's great, right up in the ears there, yeah. And then, yes, and if you go slow. I know, this is where it's a helicopter one? Yes. (laughs) I'm sorry about that little guy. And then I'll show you where you get them going, (laughs) is like this. (laughs) There you go. You can develop your fitness. Let's get him flying. Very good. Great. Wow, I I thought he would kill me if I did this to him. No. But he doesn't seem to mind at all. And then while your fingers are there, Chris, Mm -hmm. try and do the jaw work. Remember? Oh, okay. At yeah. the same time as doing the ears? No. Nope. Oh, okay. Separately. But you're just in the right department now that you could use probably just your pointer finger there. Oh, well, I can really yep. feel him chomping on something. No kidding. And then try this way, up and up, back. Up and back. There you go. Very nice. Yep, and try the other direction. Yep, and don't be afraid to be more on the tip. Let me see your oh, On the tip, okay. There you are. Very good. I've never seen a relaxed rabbit. <laughs> Especially not this one. His it's nose is wiggling at half the speed. And then what you could do for his tummy is you kind of sneak into it. You get underneath mm-hmm. like this. Oh, yeah, yeah. And you work right into his tummy rather are you, than are you, are flipping you going like him. this? Yeah, like that kind of thing. Uh. So try that. Your fingers on mine. And feel, press on my fingers. Yeah. So I'm kind of in between what you are doing and put your tips right on mine. Oh, okay. Yep, yeah, there we go. So you see, I'm point specific. Mm -hmm. So it's not an overall pressure, but it's just with my tips. And it's just trying to keep those feet from eliciting their natural response. And then try and come down into the tummy lower here. Yep, there. So one hand you can just keep there, yep. And the other hand you can just rub around here. Those big feet, yep. Very nice. Oh gosh. He looks sleepy. Chris. Yeah, he's a little more relaxed now. <laughs> Good boy. You are a sleepy bunny. Oh, that's great. Wow. And oh. it's just that I practiced a bit more, that's you great. know. But you can get this Lauren. <laughs> <laughs> looks like he's skiing. <laughs> <laughs> go this way, oh, down the hill. There we go, <laughs> down the hill. Do a little hula. Round we go. If we go three times in one direction, reverse, go the other way. Nice. Let's go skiing, scrambles. Ski this way. Whoosh, whoosh. Make a great snowboarder, Chris. <laughs> That's one well rubbed micro bunny. <laughs> very nice. He's been handled a lot and he just he's very used to people. So mm-hmm. uh, but when he doesn't get his run, he gets really quite mm-hmm. antsy. He's a slithering bunny. <laughs> <laughs> We're sliding into oblivion. Look at those little front legs. Gosh, they are so sweet. He's been so healthy since we got him. Yes. Well, thank you so much for letting us visit and yeah, well, it was get our hands Actually, on Actually, thank him. you for giving me some new, uh, new techniques for this little guy. And if you ever go out of cough or something like that, mm-hmm. I'm going to show you some therapeutics. Like what you would do is you jiggle them. So like you could do this kind of thing where your whole body's going and you do a kind of thing where you have a topotement, like a percussive movement. And you Almost can like when you're like, burping a baby. Exactly, mm-hmm. that's exactly it. But you try and get it so that their mm-hmm. chest is invigorated and that if they have any congestion, they're able to get it up. And now for the classic pet massage. Maureen and Molly, the perfect pussycat. And today we're going to massage Molly from the tip of her nose down to her toes. And Molly is the softest touch. She has a texture that's just like satin. You're lucky, Maureen. Mm -hmm. Does Molly have any problems? She has digestive problems. So she's not into people food and that type of thing. Mm -hmm. She just has strictly food from the vet and her water. That's all she has. So as long as we stick to those things, Molly is fine. Mm -hmm. And what you can do with Molly when um, her tummy acts up is massage her in her lower back around here Mm -hmm. and then directly onto her tummy. Backs like this. Um, that are carrying a little extra weight in the tummy are strained, they're pulled. So any massaging that you can do down these long spinal muscles. So let me put a hand in the front and let you massage 
along the back there. So you just take your fingers like that, yeah. And you can do a general kind of stroke down there with your fingertips with these fingers and this thumb on either side. And that just holds the spine in between your fingers and massages the long spinal muscles. And then even when she's seated on your lap, I can get at her tummy. Now all this area here, um, Molly's a bit like a Buddha. She's got quite an ample tummy. And you can have your cat sit on your lap like this and be able to massage all in here. So you can take your fingertips all together like this, Maureen, and just reach around the front of her. Yep, yeah. and put all the fingers together and then little circles. Yep. Oh, yeah. yeah. And especially right down into her lower abdomen and along into each of the corners. Very good, Molly. Very good. Yep. So that you've got a good kneading happening. And right down in here, a little lower, that's where her tummy is and her digestive system is really helped by massaging all around there. Here's the tummy rub, Molly. Yes, all into here like this. And then the other thing that you do, and she might object to this because it's an unusual situation and it's not your living room. Mm -hmm. So you take her legs and you extend one and tuck it back in and there we go and extend the other one. And this is the same as when we have um, a baby massage oh, okay. and we take these hips and we massage all around into the hips. There you go. That's a good girl. And then she can let her go on to her more comfortable position in your lap there. There you go. <laughs> and then if she had respiratory problems, you would be able to have her like this and you would do these little cupping motions. So try that. It's the same as if I was cupping on you. Yep, and you cup your hand a little bit like that. That's it. And then come around this way right under the tummy. And that's very good for shaking up the thorax okay. and getting them able to cough more effectively. So if they have hairballs and that sort of thing, they get mm -hmm. that coughed out. And if a cat has asthma, a lot of the air passages in the respiratory system get tight mm -hmm. and it's hard for them to breathe. So we do long strokes like this to really get deeper into the rib area so you can open up your fingers like that mm -hmm. and pull down through the ribs. Yep, go that way and then the ribs are at an angle like that. You're so soft, Molly. Yes, and you can make a claw-like grip. That's excellent. Very nice. Yes. And I know Molly doesn't have asthma or breathing problems, but you would start right up here if you had anyone else that you were teaching mm -hmm. and then work all the drainage areas and then do the topotement okay. and the rib raking. Anything to loosen up these areas makes it easier for them to breathe. And then with the digestive problems, that's good. As Molly gets older, if she gets any arthritis, that's where we focus in doing normal circulatory movements all around the large joints, like the hips. So you can again take your fingertip needing Maureen and work all into the mm -hmm. hips like that. Try that. Excellent. And you can even be more on the tips. Yep. And you can work right into the tail area there. So if she was constipated or something like that, we do the same technique with any animal with a lovely tail. And uh, even with horses, you do a round movement like this, so it's like a traction and a rotation at the same time. And that gets the whole lower digestive area loosened up. Mm -hmm. So you're able to affect their bowel and have it ease up so they don't strain, you know, oh, if they're okay. constipated. There you go. Thank you very much. Wasn't that nice, Molly? <laughs> Thanks, Maureen. You're so soft. Give you some nice long strokes right from your nose. So you'll see that doing your cat massages are very short and brief massages. That took us maybe about five minutes to massage Molly. And often they aren't as calm as Molly is today. So if you've got a cat that's trying to get out of your arms, well, don't make any mistake, you're still rubbing them the right way. Thanks, Molly. Thanks, Maureen. 
So this is Buster. Buster, and this is Olivier. Oh, <laughs> I have a Karen Terrier, oh, so I miss uh, I miss Bert when I'm away. But with the dogs, they're um, they're a moving landscape, so you really make sure that you're able to. Um, you just move where they do, which means you can't really plan where to start all the time. Yeah. Ideally, what I would do is start on the back. And that way, just like people, you've affected the entire nervous system. But with this fellow, you know, he's definitely um, in a good position to be able to rub his tummy. It's just instinctive. And what we do when we've got them on their back like this is we just do more that you wouldn't think of with an ordinary dog padding because you wouldn't think of, if you come really close to me here, you wouldn't think of doing a bilateral fingertip kneading like this, but right. just put your hands on there and you, you kind of brace them so that you've got his armpits hooked down. Yeah, and don't be afraid to be right on your tips. Put all your tips together. So it is like a fingertip kneading where you're way too generous. Let me show you, I'm really stingy. So you just put them all together like that. And then you can be point specific. Right. So put your hands right on mine and I'll show you the feel. So if you see my fingertips are all together. Yep. And I rotate here right. at the wrist. So you get that kind of movement. You've got good bilateral movement. So just keep the tips together and don't let them bend like that. So they're stiff. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's good. You're a fast learner. And then I come down and I work right underneath. You mm -hmm. see, I can get right underneath mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. They've got a diaphragm that is the same as ours that, you know, massages their digestive organs. Mm -hmm. And you go right down here too. Now with male dogs, you kind of get around their reproductive system when right. you're working the tummy so that you can do this kind of scooping. Yeah. You know, like we do with tummies. Sea scooping. In, yes, yes. Good old sea scooping. Very nice. <laughs> and this fingertip kneading, and you can get right into the corners mm -hmm. of their digestive system, mm -hmm. just like us. Mm -hmm. They have a very short fuse, like, like kids, like babies. Like you can't do prolonged massages. You really have to kind of massage on the fly. And uh, you just try and do as much as you can wherever you can. Mm -hmm. Well, they're usually chewing on you. And, um, and that's very much like kids. You know, with babies, they've got arms moving and legs. And mm -hmm. they're chewing on you and sucking on your fingers and that kind of thing. And then I usually have treats in my pocket. So I have every bribery possible. And you can also do this C shape to your hand in here mm -hmm. like this. And you can get the whole chest. Especially these guys who are a bit barrel-chested, um, yeah. and they come quite forward. The sternum is quite forward, so that you can get a nice shape in there. And you can work back and forth like this, so that you can do the back, and you kind of have one hand on the front, and then one hand back here. And then we'll go this way. Oh, See if nice. That's okay. He is being nice. <laughs> and then you work all the way down there chew these fingers <laughs> yes. and then you can come all the way up and down the spine and a lot of dogs like this it's actually hard to get them so that you can massage their back because they just flip right over like this so what I was going to show you is I can actually work with my hand on the floor like this mm -hmm. working up into his back you know and they tend to yeah <laughs> there we'll give Susie that Yes, there we go. And then what we can do is our thumb kneading. So this alternate thumb kneading, what I do is I work either side of the spine all the way up to the base of the skull there. So here, I'll pass him along. <laughs> He's going down for the so count. Funny. Okay, so what we're going to do with these tails is a tail rotation. Of course, I've never done it in this position, but considering that this is the only position we've got with this guy, so what you do is you have a hold of the tail and usually I'm able to stabilize by having one hand on the sacrum and the other on the tail and I go around in this direction a few times and around in that direction. And what that does is activate the lower back and it makes an animal who might be constipated or full of gas able to let go of that sphincter that needs to open up. But I always include it in the dog massage that this tail rotation is something when dogs have digestive problems that you can use as a really good way to be able to manipulate the lower bowel. This is such a wonderful waggy tail. Get a hold of this tail that's just an electric propeller. 
and then really vigorous things on the, you know, that you just don't see in European massage. So that you can do really vigorous, kind of like finger currying. You know, when you curry a horse, you've got right. all sorts of brushes that would do this too. It moves but, the circulation. Yeah, and it's really good for their coats. So oh, that's yeah. why encouraging people who love to brush their dogs mm -hmm. to have different ways to brush. You know, and, and really take an active and thorough brushing on a daily basis. It's just the whole way that the body can respond. And you just can't do enough of this. And so I'm always finding out from people, you know, how, but it really gets your own cardiovascular going. Like you just really work up quite a lather doing the fast and vigorous kinds of strokes. And a lot of people are used to this, you know, the really firm reflex stroking that we do. So those are a, a general overview where you've got all the strokes you can work on the back. And remember you can do general hip things with your palms and your hands and then you can be really picky with your fingertips and your thumbs. Mm -hmm. So those are still the main surfaces. Heel of your hand, fingertips, thumbs. And around the face, a lot of dogs have sinus problems mm -hmm. that have pushed in faces. These guys are pretty hardy. Hi Max. Oh he's a beauty. How old is he Ronnie? He's 12. He's an albino. So with um, dogs that are older, what you look for is uh, deterioration in their joints, hmm. especially their yes. hip joint. Hip and, and these parts too. Yes. Hip dysplasia is a very big problem with uh, senior animals, just like it is with any senior citizen that's two-legged. So I work all in this area. And, uh, oh, good stretch <laughs> reflex. Thank mm -hmm. you. And so what you can do is this kind of thing, and then the alternate thumb kneading. Mm -hmm. So really use, yeah, two hands on the jaw, yeah. And then you can encompass the shoulder like this. So you just come around here a bit, and then you've got a really nice grip all around oh, that right, bone. Yeah, right. yeah. Oh, nice work, girls. Very good. Okay, let's show you something fancy since you're good at that. Let's put your thumb right on top of mine. Yeah. That's good. And this is one where... Oh, jeez. Isn't that good? Yeah, that must be really good on the dog. <laughs> yeah, and you come right back up here to where that attaches. All the way around the shoulder. Now try and make your thumbs so they overlap each other and oh, slow it down. Don't be very efficient. That's exactly it. Yep. Oh, lovely. You are in the right profession. Ah. Oh, she's amazing. Oh, yeah. She's me. <laughs> That's very nice. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah, you've got a lot of pressure. So I've got this kind of pressure. Just a little up from what you're mm -hmm. doing. Yes, okay. Yeah, and then you won't get that flicking right. happening. Because uh, when I get massaged, they put me in, they take the muscle and yes. put it in submission. And you can do that. You just build up his tolerance to it. Right. What a great dog. He's I from Mexico. That's why his name's Max. Oh. He's oh, an international right sheepdog. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So he's an Irish sheepdog? Old English. Old English from Mexico. From Mexico. Mm -hmm. Only in Toronto. Okay, so what we'll do now, now you've got the pressure going this way, we're going to go down the whole leg, mm -hmm. and you can go like this, and work right down to his boots. Should I take his Same boots thing? off? That's probably a good idea. Yeah. You have very lovely shoes. Uh, very nice. Sound. And this is really good for um, massaging for clients where their dogs might be sensitive. Mm -hmm. Just tell them to give their dog's feet a rub. Mm -hmm. Put the boot on, give them a rub afterwards. Yeah. So you know, it's like a nice orientation. It. Yeah. Yeah. And also that they get damp in the boots if they mm -hmm. wear them a long time. So, you know, they're able to get all of that circulation. And then you can hold. This way you can get your fingers right, right underneath and get a good all-encompassing. Here, I'll let you two get closer together and I'll get out of the way. Because then you've got a good angle. Very nice. Yep. Good work, Max. That's lovely. Oh, boy. That's very nice. And you can go all the way down. So keep going all the way down to the paws. And then when you get down to the paws, you can go in individual... Right. So you get in between mm -hmm. their toes, 
And the more dogs are massaged between their toes, the less sensitive they are. Oh, yeah? So encourage your clients yes. to really rub your dog's feet in between the toes. That's a great idea. They're highly sensitized. And that way, it's much easier for anyone to handle their feet. Yeah. I know I do that a lot too with them, right? Mm -hmm. And what you do is you massage here, yeah. especially with an elderly dog, yeah. and then you do a passive move, oh. and then you massage again. He's mm -hmm. so good. You can stretch him out this way. And then with the leg here, too, what you can do is put a hand there, yeah, and you stretch out and press that back. Yep, yeah, that's it, exactly. And right out, and then back up, and then this way and right out nice. and back yep and then you would work all right. around in here Inside. yep sorry about that mm -hmm. there you go and I'm going to show you since he's so comfortable we're going <laughs> to liven him up <laughs> yeah. so we've got the basic massage working down the spine mm -hmm. we've got how to work down the extremities and the tummy work but some of it is very much like how people pat their dogs ordinarily like this mm -hmm. but we're going to do it with a little bit more organizational detail so that we're going to work his thorax mm -hmm. like this so come around this side and we'll give him a wake up here and you could do this when he's standing up and you can even cup a bit more of your fingers yeah there we go Mm. Thank you, Wicky. Guys mm. and child. <laughs> That's great. Good work. Boy. So I'll show you the other ways Stay. in which you can work, and that's like this. You can work, oh, thank you. <laughs> it's quite all right. <laughs> you can work right around here. So you've got this bilateral. Yeah, nice. Perfect. <laughs> so there you go. You can do it that way. Or he's just my height. So we'll see. Uh, and then this is the other way that I work. So I get a bit of a grip on them and then work right around like this. Mm -hmm. And then this kind of thing is what I meant. So what we do is we go like this. Mm -hmm. And you can do both sides. Oh, isn't that good? Mm -hmm. And they usually like that all around there, so try that. And it's just a bit different than how you would do ordinarily. So you can have that side, I'll have this side. Isn't that nice? Yes. You're going to be breathing. This is a great Breathe. exercise to do with your lover or your husband yep. or wife on the dog. Oh, Definitely. yeah. Good family bonding. Good family. <laughs> and then on each other, right? <laughs> okay. And there are dogs that have um, strokes and paralysis and all that kind of thing. And you would work both sides at the same time. You know, just for the same as we do with any stroke recovery. So it's good when you got two people. Yeah. So can they cough or like say like a Yeah, that's what he's doing. Yeah, he's yeah going, that's what, Oof. yeah. Oof. Yeah, it was so good. It's stimulating something. Yeah. Great, good work. And then this is the same sort of thing, just working right around the ears. There he goes. That was so good. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, well done. Yeah. <laughs> Aren't you? You're in good hands. Transporting is a really big deal. Getting them used to a trailer is often uh, a really traumatic experience. So then what we're going to do is be able to have a stroke come from further down where it's not going to bother her as much. Because remember this horse is a uh, well handled horse, okay? She's contactable. She's pretty nice. So horse, she's workable for truth. sure. Yeah. And she's so beautiful to touch. So this she's is so like awesome. your high end athlete. She is. You know, this is every muscle is a working muscle. And then once I I meet my hands there, I'm gonna pull up and down under and pull up. See there's the, the Okay, so remember folks, we've got these light, long skinny legs and you want to work with them and you can um, work with your thumb kneading all the way down. That alternate thumb kneading does really well on the legs, right, right down into the hoof. 
So you want to work all the way down. If you practice on these fur bearing animals, you really do get your radar increased tactily for your own uh, perceptions of what's going on underneath there. So when you come right down here, you can work all with your fingertips around here and you can work like this with your thumbs and your fingertips and your whole hand. And you can do alternating strokes too. And you really want to get their hooves handleable. You know, like every farrier would love it if everyone would make a horse's legs and especially the feet really easily handleable. So really work your way always down into the this most sensitive area. And can I just show you um, about climbing up? Because I always find that this is easier. So for me to be able to be up on um, corral fence or any kind of uh, side of the stall. You can do things so that you can hold on to yourself. So what you want to do is not necessarily sit on top of it because in your tippy you want to be like this so you can hook or you want to be like this and then the horse itself is what you're going to pull towards you. And you have a real good feeling when you're up against the horse about whether it is a good feeling or not but usually you work into it. And again, you work all the areas that are going to be able to give you more relaxation. So I'll come down here to the brisket in general and rub in the chest. But going around this horse's scar site is really important. Nice way to warm up your hands on a, on a cold day, working inside the inner thigh. And I'm looking for her udder. There we have nice rise. Because usually you can uh, find a really good calming place rubbing up and down between their legs. And the main idea is always again is about getting the blood up into the trunk of the animal. And then nature does take care of itself. All we're doing is helping nature do what it's already trying to do and that's get the good blood into an area and have things heal up as fast as possible. So I always like to do a horse that I've never done before just so you don't think oh well it's easy you know because I know these horses and we've never met before so working out into the tail like I've had myself all over her so this is not the thing you do at the beginning but you rather leave till the end nice reaction the tail coming up like that into my hand and a horse's tail is much easier to rotate than a cow's tail they've got a tremendous amount of muscle underneath this tail and you can also get a grip that's very strong all the way around okay and with him what I'm going to do is be able to lean out yeah. and you can just feel how the tail will give but you just stay here like this so it doesn't look like much of anything is happening but it's easy to step a foot back and extend your arms how are you doing up there <laughs> oh, what a nice natural stretch he gave. Neat, eh? You see that? His rump is looking great. He just went, oh. Yeah. That was very nice. Yeah, Thank that you. was very nice. Next, I'd like you to meet my cat, Max. A beautiful Persian pussycat in a feline frenzy of me attempting to massage the unmassageable. Take a look. Hi, I'm Christine Sutherland. And this is my cat, Max, and my mother, Margaret. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. And we have a hard-to-handle cat here. 
Max would like to be doing anything else but Same. what he's doing right now. Here, I'll take him, Mom. This is a cat that is very hard to massage. Max is just about unmassageable. But cats like this are important to massage because they get hairballs. He also has a problem with breathing. He's got a cute little pushed in face. So that makes him a candidate for sinus problems. So you always work all around here, all around his eyes, all around the sinuses, yes, and all the way down the back. So right here in between his shoulder blades, all the way down into his lower back. So you can take two fingers and work either side of the spine. So when you've got a cat with problems <laughs> that are respiratory, you always work their chest. So you work all in here, right underneath the chin, all down into the sternum, and all into the upper ribs and thoracic area. Max is, as you can see, a long-haired Persian. He's a very shy cat. So having Max on camera, as, uh, as his body language tells us, is not an easy task. He's asking my mom to save him. He's had it. So let's see, Mom, if we can get him around. There you go. Yeah, we just want to show how we massage your sinuses up here. So it's really important to massage well, right I mean, I up the up nose. Here, right now. So that's keeping him nice and calm. So we do these kind of movements, same as we would do with rabbits that have sinus problems, all up the face and around where the whiskers are and all underneath the eyes, right up into this area here, around the ear, where you get all sorts of drainage happening. There you there go. There we are. And you can give them a massage all behind the ears, all the way down the neck. His heart's still beating. Good, good. And sometimes with hard to handle cats, you have them on their owner's laps, like Max, for shy cats. And then you're able to get all the way down the spine. So you can massage like this all the way down with your thumbs or your you fingertips. Yeah, I've got them. And you can go all the way down here into his lower back. And, excuse me, right out the tail. So you want to make a continuous stroke like this, Mom. Okay, so let's see if we can massage him all the way down his back. That's the idea, that you're able to massage them right from the top of their nose all the way down to their tail and toes and be able to calm down their nervous system.